So, the big question that many of us have in store or want to know is, what is 2020 going to hold for us? What is 2020 going to be about for us as believers? What's going to happen in the world in 2020? You see, 2020 is going to be a year where our faith is going to face many challenges. You see, many who are hoping that as we entered into 2020 and as time is, is, will go on in 2020, that somehow the challenges of 2020, I mean 2021, that somehow the challenges of 2020 are going to disappear or somehow the challenges of 2020 are going to go away. But this is unfortunately not the case. 2020 will be a year where our faith will really be challenged by fear. I'll repeat that. 2020 will be a year where our faith will truly be challenged by the monster called fear. And God wants to help us conquer that monster of fear. You see, in Deuteronomy 30 verse 19, Moses speaks to the Israelites and he says, this is what the Lord has said. I've set before you life and death, blessings and curses. Choose therefore life that you and your descendants will live. I'll repeat that. Deuteronomy 30 verse 19. I've set before you life and death, blessings and curses. Choose therefore life that, your, that you and your descendants may live. Choose therefore faith this year. Don't choose fear that you and your descendants will live, that God will take you out of the challenges that have come from 2020 into the promises that he has for you in 2021 and beyond. Choose faith and not fear this year. You see, we're either going to choose to live by faith and we'll experience the blessings of God. We'll experience God's deliverance. We'll experience God's guiding. We'll experience his wisdom in the face of our challenges. Our challenges are not going to magically disappear. But when we choose faith, when we choose to walk in obedience to God this year, in the midst, in spite of your challenges, in spite of your sickness, in spite of your heartache, in spite of the challenges you face in your business or your career, you will experience the blessings of God. But if we choose fear this year, if we choose fear this year, we will experience the plans of the evil one. We will experience sickness. We'll experience failure. We'll experience everything Satan has planned for us if we choose fear this year. But God wants you to choose faith this year. He wants you to overcome that monster called fear this year. This year, for those who choose life, for those who choose fear, for those who choose to walk with God, will be a great year. Despite the challenges, despite the second and the third waves of COVID-19, besides the challenges we face in our nation concerning our economy, besides the challenges you face in your family, this year will be a great year of victory if you choose the way of faith this year. You see, what many people don't understand is we're in the battle of all ages. We're in the fight of all ages. Not only a battle, but a war, the war of all ages. You see, God has got great plans for us in the midst of our challenges. God has planned wonderful things for us. In heaven, your names are written in heaven. And in heaven, in that land's book of life, are all God's dreams and promises for you. But in the kingdom of darkness, there's all our enemies' plans and promises for our lives. And we must come to the realization that we're in a war this year and in every year. But it's specifically this year. The tool that Satan is going to use to hinder us, the tool that Satan is going to use to entrap us will be fear. More than any other years will be fear. And you'll experience that. Many of us started experiencing this in 2020, but there will be a greater onslaught in 2021. But the good news is God is with us. The good news is God has given us the faith tools we need to get through this year. And what are our faith tools? Simple. It's the word of God, not only the written letter, but the word of God that's in your heart, 
The word of God that brings revelation to your heart when you spend time with God and our relationship with the Holy Spirit, our fellowship with the Holy Spirit. You see, once we get the word of God in our hearts and our faith start growing, we receive instruction from the Holy Spirit. We become more sensitive to the instruction of the Holy Spirit and he guides us out of our challenges this year. You see, many people don't understand that we face a great war, a war with an invisible realm that we cannot see with the naked eye. And one thing I must say, as terrible as COVID-19 has been and the challenges that have come with it, it is probably for me the greatest illustration, illustration we have for the battle we face with an invisible realm. You see, COVID-19 is something we cannot see with our naked eye. We cannot see this virus, but we sure can see the fruits of this virus. You see, we can see the sickness it's causing. We can see the death that it's causing. We can see that unemployment is higher than it's ever been. We can see that the whole world, unprecedentedly, the whole economy of the whole world was shut down. You see, we can't see this virus, but we can see the effects thereof. You see, and this is very much what the kingdom of darkness is like. We cannot see Satan. We cannot see his army. We cannot see his demons assigned against mankind. But we sure can see the fruits thereof. We can see the challenges we have in our marriages. We can see the difficulties our children are facing. We can see the challenges we have in our own business, in our own careers. We can see sickness and disease and all these things. We cannot see our enemy, but we sure can see the fruits thereof. But God is going to help us this year. God is jealous over you. You know, before I, I, I wanted to minister this message, God really spoke to me in a dream. And He really wants us to address this faith, this fear issue in our lives. He really wants you and me to have victory this year, 2021, in the midst of all our challenges. But we have to know our enemy. You know, my wife Evelyn, she, she uses an, this example, this illustration. You know, when it comes to a rugby match, when South Africa and New Zealand play one another, they don't just decide, let's put on our togs, let's put on our socks, and let's put on our jerseys, and let's just go out and, and play a game. No, they strategize against each other. They watch hours and hours of footage. What are their strong points? What are, what are their weaknesses? How has South Africa or New Zealand been winning their rugby games? You see, the same with our lives. God reveals to us supernaturally through dreams and through visions and through fellowship with the Holy Spirit in His Word, the plans and the strategies of our enemy. Why? So that we know how to overcome Him. And let me tell you, this year, as you focus on fear, as you focus on getting victory on fear, your faith life, your marital life, your business life, your spiritual life will go to a new level. You will experience breakthrough that you've never experienced before because God is jealous of you. He's concerned about your family. He's concerned about your career. He's concerned about our nation. He's concerned about our children. And this strong man of fear, this mountain of fear, it's God's will for you to get breakthrough in it this year. And I declare to you this year, you will get breakthrough in that fear, in that area of fear of your lives. Amen. In Jesus' name. So, 2021, back to 2021. It's going to be, be a year of great decisions for many of us, for the whole world. But I'm specifically talking to us believers. The year 2021 will be a year of great decisions, difficult decisions, faithful decisions. You see, while we were praying, we saw that there are many young people that in their hearts, they decided maybe in 2019 or in 2020, they were pretty sure. They would say they were 100% sure in this year, 2021, they were going to study this, that and the other thing. They were so sure they were going to study this. Now, all of a sudden, they have doubt in their hearts. Now, all of a sudden, they're feeling in their hearts that they should not be studying X, Y, and Z, but they should be going in another direction. God has been speaking to you, young man, young woman, but fear wants to hold you back. Many parents, many of you have been wrestling in your hearts to take your children out of a specific school and move them into another school, take them to another institution. Many of you have also been thinking, I actually want to do, bring um, home study with, do, do, do home study with my children. But because of fear, fear has been holding you back. But God is going to deal with that fear in your lives this year so that you can make good decisions for your family members that will 
echo into the future. Then there are many of you, you feel like, and you've been feeling like this for a long time, you want to study something new. You want to go in a new direction. Many of you are in your 30s. Many of you are in your 40s. And many of you are even in your 50s. And you've been thinking, I want to study something else. But fear has been holding you back. You've been having these thoughts of fear saying, I'm too old to study something new. I'm too old to go into a new direction. This is not true. God has been speaking to you. Many of you also feel in your hearts you need to do a career change. And the same goes. Many of you are in your 30s. Many of you are in your 40s. Many of you are even in your 50s. And you feel you want to take your career in a new direction. But fear is holding you back to make that commitment, to make that decision. I know that while I've been speaking to you and giving these words of knowledge, I know that many of you, these words of knowledge are resonating. And God wants to deal with fear this year. He wants to deal with fear of man. He wants to deal with fear of failure. He wants to deal, deal with fear of the future. He wants to deal with all these irrelevant phobias of fear of sickness and disease and fear of death. And if you give God a chance this year, if you commit your spiritual life to God this year, that weakness, that mountain to God this year, I'm telling you now, in the name of Jesus, He's going to set you free and you're going to walk by faith this year in Jesus' name. You see, the wonderful thing about faith, it gives us the ability to make good decisions in the face of our challenges. It gives us the grace to move in a direction in the midst of our difficult circumstances. This is the power of faith. And this is your and my portion. You see, the challenges we face with fear and the problem with fear is it will keep you stuck. It will prevent you from making difficult decisions in difficult times. It will keep you stuck on that mountain of fear. The fruits of fear are quite simple. The fruits of fear are doubt and unbelief. This year we need to take time of reflection. And not only this year, I recommend now in January, before the year starts running away with everything we have to do, take the time now to do some reflection and inner reflection. Look at the fruits in your life. Jesus said whatever is in our hearts will manifest, will come out of our mouths. Husband, what is coming out of your mouth? What is coming out of the, the mouth of your children, of your wife? Wife? What is coming out of the mouth of your husband and your children? You need to be accountable to one another this year. My wife and I are continually accountable to one another. If my wife senses this much of bitterness or anger in my heart, she will confront me and say, Honey, you know, you need to deal with that because I can see there's unforgiveness or there's anger in your heart. Where is this coming from? We have to be accountable with one another. And I'm specifically referring to fear tonight. You see, the fruits of fear are doubt and unbelief. What is coming out of your mouth when you talk about the future, when you talk about your circumstances and your challenges? Is it words of doubt or is it words of unbelief? If that's the case, there's fear in our lives we need to deal with. But what are the fruits of faith? They are love and hope. Those are the main fruits of faith. Are you walking in love? Despite the challenges you are facing, despite the hardships you are facing, despite what the world is saying, do you still have a deep love for God? Do you still have a love for your neighbor? Do you still have a love for your enemy? Besides what the world is saying, besides the challenges you are facing, do you still have hope in your heart? That is what you need to ask yourself. Do you still have hope for the good future God has planned for you? Do you still have hope that God's going to provide you a job? Do you still have hope that God is going to provide you with breakthrough in your family? Do you still believe and have hope that God is going to reconcile those broken relationships? If that is the case, then you know you have faith in your heart. I encourage you this year to deal with this mountain of fear. You see, Satan's strategy this year like I said in the beginning, his greatest strategy this year is going to use faith. It's going to, I mean, his apologies, he's going to use fear. I wish he'd use faith. He's going to use fear in our lives to prevent us from making those decisions we need to make to get out of the challenges we are in. Many of us are in challenges. Many of us don't know what to do with our careers. 
Many of those of us that are businessmen and businesswomen, we don't know what to do, we don't know what direction to go. Many of us are facing challenges in our marriages, facing challenges with our children, facing challenges in our church and in our ministries. And He wants to use these difficult circumstances to bring fear to prevent you from moving forward. But that's not the will of God for your life this year. You see, He likes using things such as the media, CNN, Fox News, News 24, and it just talks about, oh, we have this, we have this high death rates. Oh, we have so many new, new infections. Oh, this strain of the virus and that strain of the virus is more deadly than this strain of the virus. Recession, blah, 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 blah. He's bombarding us with things in the news media. Now, don't get me wrong. There's nothing wrong with looking at the news media. There's nothing wrong with being, knowing what is going on in the world. But when that news media starts drowning out faith out of our lives, we've got an issue. When that news media starts drowning out God's voice, the leading of the Holy Spirit, we've got an issue that we have to deal with. We have to confront this thing. Let 2021 be a year where we spend more time with God, where we spend more time in the Word of God, meditating on the Word of God, because the Word of God is filled with His promises for your life. The Word of God shows you who He is, who God is, who you are, who your neighbor is, and who you're destined to be. And our fellowship with the Holy Spirit, us becoming sensitive to the voice of the Holy Spirit, will guide us through this year. Now there's something I have to talk about when it comes to fear. And I want to talk to you about, I want to read for you from Job chapter 3 verse 25. And I want to read from the Amplified Classic Version. Job said, For the thing which I greatly fears come upon me, and that which I am afraid befalls me. I'll repeat that. For the thing which I greatly fear comes upon me, and that which I'm afraid befalls me. You see, Job was fearful that his children were going to sin. Job was fearful that he was going to lose everything. You see, the problem with fear is it projects into the future and it brings those fears that you have into your own life. Whether it be fear of sickness, over time that sickness will manifest. Whether it be fear of failure, over time that failure will manifest. What is that thing that you're fearing? What is that thing, that fear that you're meditating on? Let our lives not be like Job this year. Let not the things we fear come upon us. Let not the things that we are afraid of come into our lives. But let the things be that we are trusting God for manifest. Let that what you are trusting God for, that you, your faith is placed, let that manifest in your life. Let that good and healthy marriage manifest. Let your wonderful, healthy brave, confident children manifest. Let that business breakthrough manifest. Let that new job and career manifest. Don't let fear manifest in your life this year, but let God's promises that is spoken to in your heart manifest in Jesus' name. Now I want to show you something about a spirit of fear. I want to teach you some traits that you can recognize in your own life and you can ask yourself some questions. Do I have a spirit of fear operating in my life? And these are the, this is what a spirit of fear does. He's not your friend. He's not your Tommy. He's your enemy. You see, a spirit of fear has got one thing in mind. To bring absolute destruction to your life. He wants to destroy every area of your life. All these areas I've been mentioning in this broadcast. He wants to bring absolute destruction. You see, a fear brings panic and it brings torment. Now ask yourself this question. Are you in a panic about 2021? Are you, are you feeling tormented? You feel like, oh my God, I don't know what I'm going to do. What am I going to do with my children? What are we going to do with our business? What are we going to do with our bills? Are you feeling panicking? There's fear in your life. God wants to turn that around for you. Do you feel tormented? Do you feel bombarded by thoughts of fear and thoughts of anxiety that are controlling your life? When you wake up in the morning, are you thinking fearful thoughts? When you go throughout the day, are you thinking fearful thoughts? When you go to bed at night, are you thinking fearful thoughts? That's a spirit of fear that God wants to deal with in your life. Now let me tell you something about a spirit of fear, how it gets an access into your life. He uses unexpected events, he, such as traumas, 
or such as hijackings, bad events he will use to bring fear into your life. You see, Satan orchestrates various things. And the best thing for us to see, because we're all going through it, is what Satan has used now is COVID-19. And the real thing that is actually happening, the real pandemic that we're facing in the world today, is not so much COVID-19, but it's the fear that is brought with it. You see, Satan wants to control our minds. He wants to change the way we think that we get out of faith because we are going to need faith going forward to make good decisions. So he uses traumas, difficult decisions, difficult situations, maybe a hijacking or a car accident, or maybe some unexpected sickness. He, he uses these things to open a door to bring fear. Now, our responsibility with this is let us be vigilant. When you face a challenge this year, and they will come, when you face a challenge, whether it be a sickness, whether it be a career loss, whether it be whatever that challenge or trauma might be in your life, immediately be vigilant. Stand on your guard and be vigilant so that a spirit of fear will not come in to your life. Stand on God and say, ah, I will not accept these thoughts of fear. I will not meditate on fear. God said, great is he that is in me than he that is in the world. By his stripes, I'm healed. Be vigilant this year so that traumas and challenges, when they come, a spirit of fear cannot enter. Amen. The other thing about a spirit of fear, what it does in our lives, it captures us. It puts us in a cage. It's no longer us driving our lives. It's no longer us going in the direction where we want to go. Because fear will be like a bus driver. And we will be like, the, let me use it this way. Fear is like a prison bus driver. And we are those prisoners on this prison bus. And that bus driver, fear, will drive us in a direction for our lives. It will no longer be us that is dictating the direction of our lives. It will no longer be the Holy Spirit guiding us where we must go for our lives. But it will be fear. So don't allow fear this year to grip your heart. Don't allow it to take your life in a direction where you don't want it to go. Because God has better things planned for you. And lastly, what a spirit of fear does, it causes us to be confused, disorientated. It makes us unable to make decisions. Now ask yourself, are you confused about certain things, decisions you need to make? Do you feel disorientated? You don't know if you're up or down or left or right. Do you feel like you're unable to commit to a decision? Chances are good there's a spirit of fear. Can you see through these characteristics of a spirit of fear, how destructive it is? Can you see how we need to deal with fear in our lives this year to obtain victory for that which, which God has in store for us? God wants to help us this year. Now, I want to share with you something concerning faith. Before our time is up, I see we have about six minutes. I want to read something from you from Hebrews 11 verse 7. And it's specifically about faith. Because many of you are asking yourselves, what is faith? Am I just hoping for something? Is this hope really faith or is it just hope? Or am I wishing about something? I see many of you have this question. And I want to read from the book of Hebrews 11 from the Amplified Classic Version. I want to read from verse 7. And this whole chapter of 11 is about faith. In verse 7 it says, By faith, it says, prompted by faith, Noah being forewarned by God concerning events, of which as yet there was no visible sign, took heed and diligently and reverently constructed and prepared an ark for the deliverance of his own family. By his faith, which relied on God, he passed judgment, and sentence on, passed judgment and sentence on the world's unbelief and became an heir and possessor of righteousness. Now I want to show you something about faith. Faith is not just wishing about something. Christianity, like we've said many times, is a relationship. We receive an instruction from God. We receive that leading from the Holy Spirit. We receive a vision or a dream where God gives us instruction. And by faith we step out and we go in that direction. Faith is not just wishing something. Faith is not just guessing. It's not a guessing game or randomly hoping for something. No, 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 no. 
Faith is receiving an instruction from God by the leading of the Holy Spirit, whether it's a vision, a dream, whether it's in the word of God. And it's us stepping out or moving out in obedience so that we can achieve the desired result. So that we can walk into the promises of God. That is faith. And you see Noah's obedience. Noah lived in a time where there was never rain before. Never had there been rain. He didn't have a cooking clue what God was talking about. Build an ark. Water is going to fall from the sky. He had no idea. But by faith he stepped out when he received an instruction to build an ark. An ark. And what was the end result? He received breakthrough. He received his salvation. He was delivered from the judgment that was to come. Now God has been speaking to many of you that are listening to me now and that will listen to this broadcast later on. God has been speaking to many of you already last year concerning your family, your loved ones, your career, your future. You have this unction in your heart, but fear has been holding you back. Now we've got to step out in faith this year and we're going to make a decision to to follow the leading of the Holy Spirit, to follow that dream God give, gave us while we were sleeping or the, the prophecy God has given us or spoken to our hearts. We're going to make that decision this year so that we can live in victory. And I guarantee you, I promise you, once we step out in faith this year, your life is going to change. God is going to navigate you through the challenges this year and you will have victory. Yes, it's going to be scary. Yes, there's going to be challenges. Yes, fear is going to want to come. But God is going to guide you out of that fear. I had a dream a few days before New Year's Eve about the body of Christ. And in this dream, I was on a very high mountain. And this mountain was going at a slope. And then there was a sheer drop. And at the bottom of this mountain, there was a body of water. And there were people jumping off this mountain, jumping down and falling into this body of water. And it was an extremely high mountain, a very, 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 very big mountain. But they were jumping. And then there was another group of people that were trying to walk down this mountain. And the Holy Spirit was guiding them and walking them. And on this mountain, Fear came walking up this mountain and everyone thought, no, they were going to be able to walk down this mountain and get to their safe place or get to their destination. But the Holy Spirit stopped them on that mountain as this, as this tiger, as the spirit of fear came up the mountain. And he asked the people, he asked this question. He said, are you prepared to jump? Because he was clearly showing that there's no easy way down this mountain. Now, many of us have, have got a mountain. Whatever that mountain is that you're facing, we're on that mountain. And this year, it's not going to be easy for us just to walk and climb down this mountain. We're going to have to take a leap of faith. Just like those men were jumping off the mountain, and the mountain wasn't like this, wasn't just a cliff where you could just jump and fall. They had to take a leap of faith and jump down and fall into that body of water. You see, 2021 is going to be like that for many of us. We're going to have to take that leap of faith without seeing where we're going to land. But we have a promise from God. We're receiving an instruction from God. And that instruction is jump. That instruction is go this way and go that way. And it's going to feel very scary for many of you this year. But I'm telling you now, I have confidence in my heart. That God is going to see you through as we deal with that monster, that strong man of faith. And as we take that leap of faith, whatever the challenges you're facing this year, God is slowly but surely going to take you out and lead you out of those challenges you're facing this year. Hallelujah. I'm so excited for you. But I want to pray. And before I pray with you, next week, Wednesday, the 6th of, of January, my wife Evelyn and I will be here again. We will be standing with you. We'll be praying for you that God will set you free. Whatever you might be fearing, whether it be fear of sickness, fear of the future, fear of man, fear of failure, whatever it is. Next week, Wednesday night at 7 o'clock, Evelyn and myself are going to be praying with those who feel that they are in bondage of fear. And God is going to set you free so that you can start walking in faith and walk in the promises of God for your life. Unfortunately, we don't have time to do that tonight because we only have half an hour slot. But next week, we will definitely be spending a lot of time in ministry. So I encourage you next week to prepare your hearts. Fast if you have to fast. Be in an attitude of prayer. God's going to set you free in Jesus' name. 
So I just want to pray as we close tonight, Father, I pray for a sensitivity now to the hearing of your Holy Spirit. Father, I command in the name of Jesus, every voice that is bringing fear, every voice that's bringing clutter into the ears of your children, be removed in the name of Jesus. Every voice that is causing a blockage and causing confusion, be silent in the name of Jesus Christ. Holy Spirit, I thank you, Lord. Let speak to your people in dreams. Speak to their hearts. Speak to them in your word. Let there be a sensitivity now in their spiritual life, Lord, to hear your voice, to receive instruction in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. God bless you.